Hello and welcome to Good Shepherd United Church of Christ in Boyertown. We are so glad you are joining us online for worship today. Today is Communion Sunday, so stop the video and take a moment to grab some bread, a cracker, whatever grain you have, and either some juice or wine or water to celebrate communion with us. God can transform whatever you have at home. In addition, if you are watching this before 9 a.m. today, we are having drive through communion August 9th from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. in our parking lot. If you drive on down Walnut Street and come in through the parking lot, myself and Pastor Matt will be under the atrium to give you communion um, and a blessing. Please wear a mask. We will be wearing masks, and our communion is pre-sealed and sanitary. So if you are able, we hope to see you this morning as well for communion. With all of that being said, let us be in the spirit of worship. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? Holy One, 
bring us together in this sacred moment. In our worship today, nourish us, sustain us with your grace, and quench our hunger and thirst for righteousness. As we break bread and drink the cup today, may we experience a foretaste of the heavenly banquet that prepares us for deeper discipleship. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God. Merciful God, we come before you humbly. We have not fulfilled the call to be your people. We have ignored the needs of others and cries for help. We have not fed others as you feed us. For these times we falter. Remind us again of your grace and love. Forgive our missteps and put us on the path of discipleship once again. Renewed by your presence with us, send us out to be bearers of your good news. Amen. Hear again the good news of the gospel. Jesus reveals to us God's love and forgiveness. Our sins are removed from us. Be at peace. Amen. Now for a moment of connection, take time to think about your good shepherd friends and families, those you miss dearly. Say a prayer for them or consider contacting them this week. Even as we maintain physical distance, let us try to continue to strengthen our communal and spiritual connection to one another. So let us take a moment of silence for our moment of connection. Amen. And now's the time when I talk to the children watching worship today. And today's scripture is a very familiar story, and I bet you've heard it in Sunday school before. It's the feeding of the 5,000. It's when Jesus and his disciples are teaching, and they've gathered such a big crowd, but everybody's hungry. Um, and they don't have enough food to feed the 5,000 people that are gathered. They've only got a few fish and a few um, loaves of bread. But when they begin to break up the fish and bread and they share the food, everybody eats enough and everybody is full. And this is such an important story that it's even in more than one of our Gospels. So we even have a few different versions of this story in our Bible. Now, 
The Bible doesn't tell us exactly how Jesus made the bread and the fish enough to feed 5,000 people. And we know Jesus performs lots of miracles in the Bible, and we don't know exactly how it happens. But one of the stories says that the fish and the loaves belong to a little boy, and that he brought them out and said, I have these, and we can use them to feed everybody here. And so sometimes I wonder that maybe a few different people in that crowd had packed a lunch, and when that boy offered up his fish and his loaves, everyone around him saw his generosity, and they offered up the food that they had packed, and then other people saw everyone else's generosity, and they offered up the food they had, and when everyone put all of their food together, it was enough to feed the whole crowd. And I think that's a good example for how we can follow Jesus in our life. When we do something kind, when we do something generous, when we share, it inspires others to do the same thing. So sometimes the best way to follow Jesus, the best way to show others what being a Christian is like, isn't even just to talk about it, it's in our actions. That when we do something kind and generous and loving, it inspires other people to do those things too. And when they say, man, you're such a kind or generous or loving person, why do you do that? You can say, it's because I follow Jesus or it's because I'm a Christian. So doing those acts of kindness and generosity is one of the best ways to spread Jesus's message to others. So let us pray together. Holy and life-giving God, we thank you for stories from the Bible like the feeding of the 5,000 that remind us how to act, how to be generous, how to be caring, and how to be loving. Help us act in ways that follow Jesus so that others can be inspired to follow Jesus too, and others can be inspired to act in generous and caring ways so that waves and waves of your love spread not only to the people we know, but continue to spread out into our community, into our country, and into our world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our gospel reading for today recalls the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000. This miracle challenges our notions of scarcity with the idea of God's abundance. As we listen to our reading from the Gospel of Matthew, may we consider where we see God's blessing and abundance in our world today. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. For the word of God inspired by the Spirit, thanks be to God. Yes. 
Do we have enough? How often have we asked ourselves this question? How often do we worry about having enough for any given situation? We worry about having enough money saved for retirement, and then we worry about having that money last through our retirements. We question whether we have enough energy to deal with the challenges in front of us, or enough wisdom or knowledge to deal with the situation that requires some discernment. And familiar for most of us, we wonder if we have enough food to feed everyone, especially when we have guests over. As concerned people, we consider and reconsider if we truly have enough. Given that we live in a world of finite resources, we struggle, we worry, and we even panic about having enough to meet the needs of ourselves and our loved ones. We, in one way or another, are asking ourselves the question, how much is enough? And in all honesty, if we look at the world with scarcity, scarcity about the resources available, and we think that whatever we have might not truly be enough. We think we could always use just a little bit more, just in case. Or perhaps we could adopt a different perspective. We could, in the words of my seminary professor, Larry Evans, choose to believe, in answer to the question, how much is enough, that it is always enough. It is always enough. His words are an invitation to consider that whatever we have at the moment will indeed be enough to meet the need. There is pervasive power in the assertion that what we have is enough for everybody, even when it doesn't always appear that way. It takes faith to make such a statement. Part of the message of today's gospel reading is a counter for our concerns about not having enough. And it is an invitation to faith. Jesus says to the disciples and to us, don't worry, there is always enough. The idea that there is always enough for everyone within the kingdom of God is a powerful idea, one that can capture our imaginations. Our gospel reading for today describes a miracle of having more than enough that has long captured Christians' interest and imagination. This miracle, the feeding of the 5,000, is one of the few miracles that is recorded in all four Gospels. Furthermore, the idea of Christians and God feeding people is so powerful for Christians that Matthew and Mark double down on emphasizing this idea by telling a second story of Jesus feeding a crowd, this time of 4,000. In the ancient world, a story, this story of miraculous feeding was powerful enough that it bared repeating multiple times for early Christians. This story was powerful enough that mosaics can be found from all the way from the fourth century. They are found in ancient churches and ruins along the Sea of Galilee. And the mosaics are simple yet powerful because they portray the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes. And they exist both in the aptly named Church of the Multiplication, in the northwest corner of the sea, and in the burnt-out ruins of a church in Hippos. Christians believe that both places sit literally on the ground that Jesus fed the multitudes on. This event was so important that ancient 
Christian pilgrims made a point of going out of their way to visit these sites while they went on pilgrimage to the Holy Land. The multiple retellings in this ancient desire to visit the place where it happened show us that this miracle has long been remembered and honored by Christians. It has consistently been one that is honored and told throughout the centuries. And the significance of this story is not just in it being a grand miracle, but in the message it gave to the people who lived under Roman rule at the time. The Roman world was harsh and brutal, and this brutality and harshness is demonstrated immediately before this miracle story, when we hear that Herod has beheaded John the Baptist, and that harshness and brutality, that idea of scarcity of resources, is demonstrated by the benefits that Rome would award its elite citizens while ignoring others in the empire. One of the big advantages of being a Roman citizen that lived in ancient Rome itself was something called the corn dole. And it is sort of what it sounds like, that the government would distribute a ration of corn, usually made into bread, as a basic diet for Romans. And not everyone was entitled to it. Slaves, for example, didn't get it. And usually, the elite, everybody except the elite wasn't guaranteed it. And the number of people actually eligible for it throughout the centuries varied substantially throughout Roman history. But it is true that Rome gave some bread to its people, and it attracted people to the city. In fact, Julius Caesar was so worried about resources that he cut the amount of people eligible for the corn dole to stop the influx of people to the city from the surrounding countryside. So in comparison to this, this story is Jesus handing out the corn dole, handing out bread to the people of the kingdom of God without limit and without any other barriers. And I think it's important to note that at the beginning of this story, Jesus leaves the occupied Roman world behind and sails across the Sea of Galilee into the wilderness. He goes to a deserted place. And it is in that deserted place, outside the center of Roman rule, that Jesus demonstrates the kingdom of God, the alternate kingdom. And it is a kingdom not of scarcity, but of abundance. Rather than listening to the disciples and sending everyone away, rather than believing that you cannot feed so many with only five loaves and two fish, Jesus blesses what is available and passes it out, and everyone is fed. Everyone, 5,000 men plus more women and children is fed, and there is still enough left over for 12 baskets full of leftovers. Are five loaves and two fish enough? It is always enough. Whatever we have is always enough in the kingdom of God. I think that this is a critical idea for us to keep in mind during this time. We worry about our resources in the time of pandemic. These past four months have drained energy from us. Some of us are filled with concern for loved ones. Vulnerable people are concerned about their health. Middle-aged people are concerned about their elderly parents. Parents are stressed about decisions regarding children returning to school. Christians all over are worried 
if their ministries are enough, and if they are honoring God and taking care of people enough in their decisions. Everyone is worried about the economy. In general, we are asking ourselves if we have enough, enough courage, enough wisdom, enough energy, enough money, enough resources in general, enough of everything to face this situation. And when we ask these questions out loud and deep in our hearts and souls, Jesus says to us that it is always enough. This story reminds us that the kingdom of God is a place of abundance and blessing. The kingdom of God is a place where might, what might not seem to be enough for our needs turns out to be more than enough. Jesus reminds us that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, that even the smallest things sometimes make the greatest impact. Have faith, fellow Christians. With God's blessing, all that we have is more than enough to meet our needs. The kingdom is of God is within us and around us, and that that is more than enough. Amen and amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy One, we give you thanks that with your blessing we always have enough. Give us faith to see not what we lack, but the power of the things we possess, especially the power of our faith in you. May even the smallest bit of faith we possess be magnified and nurtured by the presence of the Spirit until it produces wildly and abundantly. We pray for abundant faith not only for ourselves, but for all that are on our hearts and minds this day. For those who need faith to face challenges of health and of life in general, we pray. For those who need faith to help them through their grief, we pray for trust and the promise of redemption for all. For all the others who need our prayers known and unknown, bless our supplications for them. For the world, our community, and our church, that all may have their needs met by the resources we possess, we pray. And finally, O oh Lord, we pray that you will help us share our blessings and resources never fearing that there is not enough to go around. Help us to release that which we hold on to too tightly. Help us to use that which we have for the sake of others. Help us to build the kingdom in word and in deed. Amen. What is it we can offer fellow Christians? A kind word, sharing our resources of food and joy, power perhaps even this week. We invite each of you to continue to give as you are able from yourself, trusting in God's blessing for the resources you possess. You can continue to support us here at the church by praying for us, and by giving as you are able, either online or by mailing in your envelopes, let us be in a spirit of offering and meditation.
Let us pray together our prayer of dedication. Generous God, we give back to you in response to all the good things that we have been given. As you have blessed us, may our sharing bless others, and the time, talent, and treasure we offer, may the good news be proclaimed. Amen. If you haven't yet, please grab your elements for communion at home. We are invited to this table by the one who fed the 5,000, as he did long ago and does every time we gather. Christ prepares this meal before us. As we are hungry, let us come be fed. As we are thirsty, let us receive that which quenches our need for forgiveness. Come and remember, come and receive all that we need. Come and find that here there is enough for everyone. This table is open to all who long to experience Christ. Holy God, we praise and thank you that you have always been with us, feeding us along the way. In the ancient garden, you fed your beloved creation. In the waters of the flood, you nurtured your beloved people and sustained them through difficult times. When your people's souls were malnourished from worshiping false gods, you sent your prophets to nourish them once again with the power of your word. Ultimately, you sought to feed the whole world through Jesus Christ. In big banquets, in kind words and loving action, he nurtured your people, calling them into your kingdom. Even now, through the Holy Spirit, you sustain us as we receive this meal and become your people each day. All glory and honor, blessing and power is yours, almighty God, as we praise you with the words you gave us, saying, our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh Lord, we remember that Jesus, on the night before he died, prepared his disciples for what was to come by gathering them at the table and sharing a meal. On the night he took bread, gave thanks to you, and he broke that bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you eat it, do so in remembrance of me. Also after the meal, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, send your spirit upon our bread, our cup, and our community as we remember your son's sacrifice and victory. Bless all we offer here, and by your power, transform it. May our bread and cup be for us a sharing in your life, your resurrection, and a foretaste of the heavenly banquet that awaits us. By sharing in this meal, transform us into witnesses of your hope and grace. We pray this in your name. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, all things are now ready. The body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink. Amen. As we go from here, may we discover abundant blessings and resources to meet all of our needs. And may all that we are and all that we have be blessed by the Holy Spirit for the proclamation of God's kingdom and the sharing of God's grace. Amen.